Oh, hey. <laughs> Here we are. It's already, this is going super great already out, out the gate. Uh, hey, what's up? Uh, Sean Kirkham, also known as Big Clutch, uh, member here of Skybound. And uh, we are here with the esteemed, I'm not sure which side you're on, you're on that side, Robert Kirkman. Creator hey, of everything that Rob is Kirkman cool. here. This is, this is me here for this uh, uh, virtual Comic-Con panel. Very excited to be here at the virtual New York Comic-Con and the virtual space talking about virtual things. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I definitely miss not being at in New York 40-year Comic-Con. Like all the craziness, all the hecticness, the the wet shoes and the, the you know, <laughs> the mobs yeah. of people. I really miss those wet shoes, I Sean. Do. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It always happens. <laughs> crazy I miss mobs. not being able to buy Transformers. That's what I usually like to do at the conventions. There's some, uh, there's some so, great uh, booths for so that yeah. stuff, for sure. But yeah. you know what? This year sucks, and we're doing our best to get through it. So we're going to do these uh, virtual things to help us along, and uh, uh, we're all going to like it. Yeah, we're going to get more people. More people are going to be at home in their PJs. I haven't worn pants in like six months, so this is pretty amazing. I'm not wearing pants right now. I put a collar on it because I wanted to be like, I wanted to look you know, I wanted to show Reed Pop that, uh, you know, we come correct when we got to be. When oh, we gotta do it. Uh, I definitely do not. I have, uh, I'm still uh, doing my own hair. So I, I, this is a, uh, this is a buzz cut that has grown out. I have not trimmed my beard whatsoever and I am wearing yon t-shirt. It looks so, fantastic. Uh, so yeah, I've also never said t-shirt like that before. So that's a real treat to the uh, virtual New York Comic Con fans. I think this is going great. I love that. We're, we're definitely staying on brand. <laughs> this whole thing I, I, so i don't think i've ever looked this homeless at a new york comic-con panel before so uh we'll, we'll, we'll be all right um so let's let's kind of like jump in the wayback machines uh this is this is skybound's 10th year uh skybound x as we've been calling it um you know the company started uh you know just really with the uh, the success of the walking dead and, and it's soon to be meteoric rise <laughs> to the collective unconscious of the entire universe. Yeah. Um, you know, we're going to be bringing back, uh, you ended the walking dead over the summer, uh, last summer. Um, now we're kind of bringing Was it that back just in. last summer. It seems like it's been years. <laughs> but it seems well, I mean, 2020 is 17 years into itself. So, um, yeah, but, uh, you know, you're bringing The Walking Dead back with The Walking Dead Deluxe. Uh, can you kind of tell us a little bit about that? Uh, I know that there's variants and a bunch of cool stuff. So you know, what do you got? Yeah, no, I'm very excited about this. Uh, we've got uh, uh, The Walking Dead Deluxe. It'll be launching in October. I want to say the first Wednesday of October. I wish I had the actual date. I do not. Uh, I'm just going to say October, uh, let's say, uh, 7th. Let's, it is let's the 7th, do that. actually. Is it really the seventh? It's, it's the seventh. Holy shit. Which, by the way, Holy Walking Dead issue one came out on October 8th of 2003. So you're, you know, in the wheelhouse. We definitely did that on purpose. Very excited about that. Uh, but no, I mean, we're bringing The Walking Dead back as a single issue experience, which I'm very excited about. It's in full color for the first time. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is going to be a monthly uh, single issue experience that will not be collected in trades, which is very important. Um, you know, we're going to have a lot of back matter. There's going to be a thing called the uh, cutting room floor that's in the back of that, where I'll be showing the original hand-drawn plots uh, that I did for each individual issue and going over different uh, things that may have happened or changed. Uh, we've also got a, a lot of really awesome uh, covers that are going to be on the series. Uh, Dave Finch is doing a cover for every issue. Uh, we've also got the original Tony Moore covers. Uh, he did up through issue 24. Uh, Charlie Adler takes over after that. So the original covers will be recolored by Dave McKegg, who is the colorist on the series. We've also got uh, Julian Tino Tedesco uh, doing a series of variant covers that will be uh, uh, commemorating memorable moments in the series. So, uh, you know, Rick's first ride into Atlanta, Rick encountering uh, a Bicycle Girl, uh, all these big uh, splashy moments that happen in the series will be uh, under his uh, uh, talented brush. We've got Arthur Adams doing uh, covers that feature uh, new characters as they're introduced and, and spotlights characters uh, as they appear for the first time. And uh, for whatever reason, uh, Arthur actually decided to make those covers connect, which is super insane. So it might be like a 50 cover connecting uh, a series of covers. Uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, that I have to buy that original art, which is a real pain in my ass. So, I was going to uh, say, yeah. do you have enough wall space for that? 
No, I don't know. I, yeah, I'll figure something out. We'll we'll tile a floor with them or something. I'll put them under glass, and you can like walk on it. It'll be nice. But uh, uh, we'll figure something out. Uh, but uh, uh, and then Charlie Edlard uh, is coming back to do a series of connecting covers for the first six issues, since those are the six issues that he did not draw. So you'll get to see a lot of those big moments that happened in those first six issues uh, uh, portrayed by series artist Charlie Adlard for the first time in some cases. And so that's going to be really awesome. But uh, but yeah, we got a really uh, you know all kinds of cool stuff planned, and it's going to be a lot of fun, and it's going to be a long uh, uh, journey. We're doing two issues a month after October, so in November you'll get issues two and three, and and it'll continue from there. And I know it was recently announced that the uh, Walking Dead show is ending with uh, season eleven, uh, and we're all very upset about that. Uh, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a real bummer to uh, to see that wrapping up, but uh, you know it's something that we've been building to, so we're really excited internally. And, uh, uh, you know, we've got this Carol and Daryl show that was just announced, and there's all kinds of other things like Fear the Walking Dead and The Walking Dead World Beyond and some things that haven't been announced that will be uh, uh, coming out. So The Walking Dead is not going anywhere anytime soon, no matter what uh, Kirkham wants. Trust me, the last thing I want is the show to end. I have, <laughs> it's so, it, I don't know, It's it's been that thing that, uh, you know, for, for 10 years has been like that comfort blanket that, you know, you always know that, you know, you're going to have that show there. And it's exciting to kind of see the different takes that are going to be in front of us. So um, yeah. it's pretty And we're going to watch amazing. Melissa McBride kick an ass for like another 100 years. So it's going to be great. I, is, that, is that one of the, the weird things I think that, you know, how she's kind of taken Carol and took all the other you know, characters that kind of influenced that and kind of really just made that into such a special uh, character. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that uh, still excites me the most about the show is, you know, watching her character evolve and watching, uh, you know, Melissa take that character uh, into places that I could have never have conceived and, you know, didn't in the comic book. So, uh, you know, that character and, and uh, uh, you know, Norman's character, Daryl, um, you know, really... Uh, show the potential and and you know what the adaptation can be because that is stuff that is not from the comics at all yeah it's so great so speaking of comics um you've got you know sort of the walking dead in in the skybound world you've got invincible uh, all these other awesome ones but uh, you know the most recent i think it's right, uh, right by my shoulder but uh firepower oh um <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I think we just got uh, issue four just came out recently, uh, this past week yeah. or recently. So, you know, like, tell us more about what you got going on with that. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, that's me getting to work with Chris Somney, who is someone that I've always wanted to work with. He's an absolutely amazing talent that, uh, you know, is is really, you know, not disappointing at all. Like, I, I, I've been anticipating working with this guy for years and being able to build this world with him and, you know, go on this journey. Uh, you know, it's it's been everything I could have imagined and, and more. Uh, so, uh, so that's really cool. But, uh, you know, it's the story of this guy named Owen Johnson, who... You know, he uh, uh, has, uh, you know, he was adopted as a kid and he wants to go off on this journey to uh, find out who his uh, birth parents were. And uh, uh, that takes him to, uh, you know, the, the Far East and, uh, and China. And uh, it kind of pulls him into this really insane uh, martial arts world. And, uh, you know, now that the uh, Prelude OGN is out and we're deep into, you know, issue four, I'm really excited about fans being able to see, you um, just how much this world encompasses because in the OGN prelude, uh, you know, we're, you know, at the temple of the flaming fist and it's a very direct martial arts story that has a lot of intrigue and a lot of cool stuff that has a bit of a twist at the end and, uh, following off the, on that twist into the series, you see that it's very much like, you know, Owen and his family in St. Louis and they're trying to live a normal life and they're back in America and, um, the martial arts world is kind of creeping back into their lives. So, you know, you see Owen and his wife getting attacked at a restaurant and, and crazy fights like through the streets of St. Louis. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's a, it's a world encompassing story that is only going to get bigger as we progress through the series, uh, leading to some really big monumental things that are, you know, going to be pretty awesome. So uh, uh, the things that Owen goes up against as the series progresses, I think, are going to be pretty startling and staggering. And I'm very excited to be getting to those issues. And uh, Chris and I are working on issue 14 right now. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, some of this stuff is already drawn. So I'm very excited to, uh, to finally get to this stuff. 
Yeah, it's it's going to be so hard to like not not be able to talk about that with the general public. Like, hey, this is the awesome stuff. Like, just trust me, it's going to come in the next yeah. year. You're going to see this amazing stuff. Uh, it's pretty great. Um, speaking of amazing stuff, I, I hear that you know there's something going on with Invincible pretty soon. Is that right? That is true. That is true. Yeah, we've got uh, Amazon Prime. We're doing the Invincible animated series. Uh, it's going to be debuting at some point in the future, but at New York Comic Con here, we were able to uh, debut our first look in the form of a teaser trailer. Uh, and uh, as we record this, uh, this is a little bit ahead of time. So I'm just going to say it has been a massive smash. It has broken the internet and people are going absolutely crazy for this thing. Uh, watch out but eBay. I mean, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, yeah, watch out eBay. Uh, Sean, who has been stockpiling uh, Invincible number one comics. I, I mean, maybe he hasn't. Who knows? Who knows? No, no, who knows? Nothing. I'm okay. sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh but yeah we got some big stuff ahead i mean the cast on this show is absolutely amazing we've got uh uh you know steven young and uh um you know all these other people it's completely dear the cast the cast on the show is is probably one of the best voice casts i've seen on any uh show to date it is so amazing and the fact that you're also able to pull in a bunch of uh you know cast members from the walking dead to, to play roles of the guardians of the uh, the globe so that's pretty yes. super cool um yes and any anyone who is aware of what happens to characters on the walking dead very regularly and is familiar with the comic book series invincible and knows what happens to the guardians of the globe uh uh sees why that casting choice was made <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be brutal i think if, if what i've seen of that scene is gonna be oh. uh it's gonna, I don't know it's what gonna, scene you would be talking about. Yeah. I don't know, but it's going to be super cool. Um, so that, that's pretty exciting. Um, you know, looking at, there's uh, there's so much, you know, we've we've had 10 years of stuff with Skybound. We've got, we're going to have years and years more. Um, is there something else? I, I know that there's something going on with uh, potentially uh, Sean Makowitz. Uh Yeah, actually. Uh, Sean Chief. Makowitz and uh, Nico Walter's book, uh, Gasolina is uh becoming a podcast uh through audible so uh skybound has a deal with audible we're going to be doing some narrative podcasts and uh one of those is gasolina which we're all very excited about it's a fantastic book and uh, i think uh, people are really going to enjoy that so it's going to be great that's exciting we're also doing um i think we're, we're going to be wrapping up our first comic book kickstarter uh, which was ava's demons with uh michelle chikowskifus I think I yeah. blew through the last name real quick, but uh, I, I think it's correct. <laughs> Sorry, Michelle. I, I apologize if it was anything. Oh, you wrong. got it, Michelle Chakowsky Fuss. It's great. There you go. Uh, but it's a it's a YA fantasy sci fi web comic uh, about a young girl and an ancient queen uh, who's living in her head. Uh, the two struggle to coexist and make the perfect pact to destroy the most powerful being in the universe. Uh, you know, we came in to help uh, to support the Kickstarter, and we're excited to publish the soft cover version of the comic down the line uh the kickstarter version is a beautiful hardcover with brand new pages uh it's going to come out uh, we have until october 14th to back the project so if you want to check it out uh, please you know check out the kickstarter type in avis demon and you'll uh you'll find it out yeah that well, it's a great project fantastic book it's uh something that i'm very excited that skybound is able to partner with michelle to uh, uh you know help her out and uh you know bringing that uh story to a uh, newer audience absolutely um, so I think we've got, uh, you know, we've got a little bit of time left. You want to, we had a lot of people hit us up on Twitter, a lot of questions. Yes. Uh, they want to kind of pick our brains about, uh, some cool stuff. I think we are, I do want to announce that, uh, we are, we've got our Halloween, uh, Skybound Expo Halloween is coming up too, October 30th. So we'll be doing a couple of days of live streaming. Uh, I'll be hosting a Comics Vault live as well. Uh, we'll have some really cool stuff for that uh, that we can't tell you about, but it's, uh, it's shiny and cool. Uh, and then we'll also <laughs> is it, is it of the of the foil nature is that what i you're, mean it's is that what you're trying gotta, to hint at gotta, gotta, you got more foil fever, a there? fever going on here um <laughs> we're also gonna have a, stuff as well well we will also have a horror theme movie trivia schmodown uh and a ton more so uh join us for that but uh let's uh let's jump into these uh completely not made up uh twitter questions um <laughs> they actually are made up by real people on twitter by real people yeah uh so okay this is for both of us so mama deadhead uh who 
who is your favorite character from all of comics that Robert has uh, written and why? Okay. You want me to go first or you want to go first? You want me to go first? I think you should go first while I try to figure out which ones I'm going to zero in on because I it's, it's very tough for me. <laughs> it's one of those tough ones too because it's, you know, I... I mean, really, Battle Beast. I, I mean, uh, come on. I mean, that... I, not that... Eh. I'd actually go Angstrom from Invincible. Uh, I think really? as yeah, as like Angstrom a Angstrom Levy over Battle Beast. I mean, yes, as like okay. a, as a Battle Beast is awesome. Like yeah, I'm gonna smash skulls and kill things or whatever. But like, there's something about Angstrom and and how like this villain has kind of like evolved and kind of in just just un unending quest to destroy Invincible and. Even to the fact that, like, you look at the last issue of Invincible and you got that little teaser in the future, and you're like, "Oh my gosh, I want, I want this whole thing, this this amazing arc of this character to kind of like come through and see it all." So, um, yeah, absolutely love that character. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, 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 I'm having a lot of fun with Owen in uh, in Firepower. Owen Johnson, I think he's cool, um, but I think. Uh, uh, the side characters and the minor characters are are, are some of the ones that uh, I have the most fun with. And I think historically, uh, through all of my books, uh, Donald Ferguson might be the uh, the character that I have uh, uh, that I just love the most. I, I uh, you know, from his, uh, you know, first appearance in uh, in Brit to all of the different things I did with him in Invincible. And uh, uh, he has a big part in the uh, Invincible cartoon series. Uh, the animated series at Amazon Prime, and he's actually played by uh, Chris Diamantopoulos, which uh, um, you know is is very exciting to me. And he has done an excellent job with that character, uh, and there's a lot of cool stuff with him. So, uh, so yeah, I don't know. I think uh, I think that character is a lot of fun. Weirdly uh, I think enough, people I was were probably gonna, say... gonna wait, think I was gonna say Andrea or something, but no. Like, I, weirdly enough, I I was thinking about Donald earlier today too, and, and trying to answer this question, I was like, have, Donald's always been that like from Brit and all that stuff. He's always had a very thing. You were almost introduced his brother at one point, right? I was going to introduce his brother, Ronald. Yes, there was going to be a Ronald Ferguson that looked exactly like Donald Ferguson, just because, I don't know, like, I guess that's cool. Uh, and, hey, look, you know, I'm not going to rule it out. Like, uh, you know, if, if the Invincible show uh, lasts for five or six seasons, you might see uh, Ronald Ferguson pop up. So, uh, so <laughs> who knows? We'll see. It's so good. Okay, this one's for you uh, from Invincible Inc., with a K okay. and I N C K, uh, do you feel there's ever common themes across your your books when writing them? Oh my God, this is a terrible question. This is like, this expects me to have like some kind of like thoughtful uh, uh, self reflection uh, in my work. Uh, uh, I do not. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think that uh, um, I don't do a lot of anti heroes. It seems like uh, you know my good guys are actually good guys. Uh, so I feel like I have like a, a you know, somewhat naive view of uh, heroism and, and uh, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, there's like a family theme through all of my work that people point out that uh, sometimes I go, oh, yeah, shit, I have it in that one, too. Uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, I think it's just that, uh, you know, stories about families, I think, are infinitely relatable because we all have a family of some form. Uh, and so I'm kind of tapping into that, uh, uh, you know, common thread that we all have, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I wish it was something interesting, like, uh, you know, like man's struggle with capitalism or something like smart, but, uh, no. I mean, yeah, yeah, you're good. <laughs> you're good. I mean, I mean, you're right. I, I, I don't think there has to be a commonality between like all the different stuff you do. I mean, I think that. It's, well, it's, I strive really hard to make sure that there's very little commonality, commonality, common, I don't know, uh, yeah. between what I do, uh, because it didn't sound right to me for some reason, but uh, 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 virtual panel, hoo -ah. but, uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, I try to, I try to make things as different as possible, but, you know, I am, I am only human, so I think yeah. that, uh, you know, I, I get into ruts, and then I, I uh, take shortcuts, and those shortcuts are often the same, and all of my books are the same, and uh, I don't know why anyone reads my work. Speaking of shortcuts, <laughs> can yeah. we talk about the car? The car? 
What car? The from was it from Brit originally, and then you reuse the car in. Oh. No, it was from, there's a, there's a, sure, let's talk about that at the New York Comic Con panel. There, let's have people look for that. This is what it is. There is a drawing of a car that first appeared in Battle Pope, that okay. then appeared in Brit, and then appeared later on in a different issue of Brit. And it was the exact same drawing of the car cut and pasted in, um, uh, the second time it appeared, it was to to save time. The third time it appeared was as a joke. <laughs> I've always, I've always loved that, that. that. Yeah, it's a, it's, it, I, and I'll give you a hint. It is an upside down car that is smashing into things. So <laughs> that'll that'll help you. Uh, Did it never show up it. in Invincible? No, no, it never made. I don't think it ever made it into Invincible. But, but there was uh, an Invincible thing that showed up in Oblivion Song. Yeah, wasn't it? The... You're talking about the Pentagon. Pentagon, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, the Pentagon, the Pentagon is the famous, uh, uh, you know, Pentagon establishing shot in Invincible, the famous, like, uh, parking in the rear thing, and uh, that was our, you know, I tried to reuse establishing shots as often as possible in Invincible to uh, save time and give the artist a break, so it would be like, anytime you cut to Mark's house, it's the same drawing, anytime you cut to the Pentagon, it's the same drawing, and so that became a famous thing in Invincible. Uh, and recently I had a character in Oblivion song go to the Pentagon and I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to have this be the exact same thing. This will be hilarious. And so, but instead of a, a wide panel at the top of the page establishing shot, it's a two page spread. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so, yeah. And, so and, and Lorenzo De Felici, uh, the artist and co-creator on that series, uh, did a spectacular job with, uh, with that Pentagon. So good. Um, so I think right. he just pasted it in. <laughs> Oh, Lorenzo, <laughs> come on. Um, uh, all right, so this is for both of us, but um, this, okay. Uh, uh, hey, Twitter user MDC1972 MDC, can I have a red foil Negan lives? I'm going to say yes. What? <laughs> I'm going to say yes. We find this guy's address. We, we, we send him one okay. or, or her. I don't know. Right. Are they male or female? Who knows? No. But, uh, uh, but yeah, I think that right. we uh, we send this person a, a a foil comic. That's just you know you got the audacity to ask a weird question like that at a at a virtual panel. Then then we're gonna say sure, that's right. happening. Look, that person is do getting it. a red so, foil. Negan lives. We're Done. gonna cure foil fever one person at a time. Yes. Um, oh, this is a and the next person that asks doesn't get one. No, we're we're out. <laughs> sure. Maybe. Um, let's see this one. Uh, Chris Piers. Uh, oh, that guy. Uh, <laughs> love Chris. Love Chris. Uh, if you could get the license to any one of your favorite movies or TV shows for a comic book adaption, what, what, what would it be? I think the word is adaptation. Moving on. Um, so, uh, <laughs> um, melody. So um, I, I, I think the obvious answer here is Transformers, just because I'm such a huge Transformers fan. Uh, but I do have that thing where, like, when I love something as much as I love Transformers, like, I don't really know what I would do with it. You know, like, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, the kind of thing that I, I love as it is. And so, like, I wouldn't really have much of a voice with it. Um, but uh, I do uh, really love the original Roger Corman classic, uh, Death Race 2000. And I think that there is a tremendous amount of potential uh, in that world that is untapped. And uh, I think if I got my hands on Death Race 2000, I could do some cool shit. Oh, so, uh, so yeah, get, get Frankenstein. Frankenstein's awesome. Oh. So, uh, so yeah. <laughs> be so great. Uh, Mama Deadhead again. Uh, what do you think about the new series Stillwater? Came out uh, just recently. I think uh, that is actually uh, Chip Zdarsky asking that question, correct? Could be. I see through your ruse, Chip. But uh, uh, but yeah no I think Stillwater is an absolutely fantastic comic uh, you know it's uh, uh, you know introducing a, a cool new world and I think that the uh, uh, you know the story of it is is great and uh, like so far tremendously successful I will say so people seem to really like that book uh, I've been uh, kind of taken aback by how well it's doing so it's great to have uh, you know another hit in the uh, Skybound stable and uh, yeah I hope to be reading Stillwater for years to come chip <laughs> get it done chip um let's see here what about uh i think 
Uh, oh gosh, there's so many. There's so many good questions here. I'm just scrolling through. Uh, Herschel Green pick a good one. one, huh? Yeah, pick a good one. Herschel Green one. Herschel Green one. You Twitter user. Okay. How did you come up with the character of Herschel? <laughs> I don't know. It was a, it was a real hard. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, um, you know that that that. I don't know. Like Carl, Carl gets shot, and that leads to a farm, and there had to be a farmer at that farm. And I used the name Herschel. And then, I don't know, like through writing scenes at this farm with this guy, I started to kind of hit on like who this guy is. And, and, it, and, it, and it happened fairly organically. Um, so uh, uh, that's kind of the process, guys. Um, but, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, there wasn't any kind of real, uh, you know, uh, wasn't any kind of real uh, uh, aha moment that, that yeah. went in there. Yeah. Uh, Mojo Drew one. Uh, what's your favorite image comic not written by you? And then uh, what is taking so long with an extremity cartoon or movie? Two part. Well, question. I will say, uh, you know, you, you, if you're going to do an extremity cartoon or a movie, you're going to need to do it right. Uh, so uh, you don't want to rush that. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, no, no forthcoming announcement on that. I don't yeah. want to seem like I'm hinting at that or anything. Uh, but uh, it is something that, uh, you know, uh, efforts are being made. Let's just say that. I think that's, the, that's where I'll leave it. Uh, as far as a uh, favorite image comic, not written by me. I mean, I, it changes from month to month just because Image Comics puts out so much great work. Um, I will say that Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips are absolutely firing on all cylinders. I think that the recent uh, pulp uh, graphic novel that they released is uh, absolutely spectacular. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the new book that they have coming out called Reckless, uh, uh, that I think launches in December, but maybe November, I really don't know, um, is possibly the best thing they've ever done. I've only read part of it because it's uh, I think they're finishing this week, but uh, I read uh, a few pages like a month ago, but uh, just just the best concept and, and really great stuff. Uh, uh, that said, I think my favorite comic right now at Image is probably Scumbag. Um, you know, that that comic is absolutely nuts. Uh, Rick Remender is firing on all cylinders on that. Uh, uh, Louis LaRosa did the first issue. Uh, Rick has a absolute murderer's row of artists lined up to draw each issue of that series. There's going to be a rotating artist each issue, which is really cool. And uh, the concept of that is just, you know, fantastic. The uh, the worst person on, on the planet is the one that has to save it, which is kind of cool. Uh, and it's just a really well done first issue. And I can't wait to see where that series goes. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. I'm, I'm super pumped for it. Uh, i got a little bit of time left. We've got a couple questions. We're going to try to get these in. Um, Great. Uh, the Pichu Angel. What did you Ooh. mean when you said P.S. Clementine lives at the end of Negan one shot? This is a tease for a future project of yours starring Clementine? It is possible that I am simply referencing the fact that at the end of the last uh, uh, Walking Dead uh, Telltale game, uh, Clementine is technically alive at the end of that game. And by saying P.S. Clementine lives at the end of the Le Negan Lives book, uh, I was not hinting at anything forthcoming with Clementine in any way whatsoever. I was just trying to mention that she's still alive. On the other hand, it is possible that I was hinting at something that possibly a little too early to talk about, and maybe I shouldn't have done that but that we may be able to talk about at some point soon in the future. So possibly there's something in the works with Clementine in some form. We'll just have to see. That's pretty good. And then uh, we've only got about 10 seconds left here. So the last question uh, was from the esteemed Kyle T or D Higgins. Uh, the better beard winner is me. So I want to say thank you for everyone coming out to the Skybound <laughs> Robert panel. What? What? Hey, look, man, if we're having a better beard contest, do I not get any points for not having a Snow White Santa Claus beard? Look, I got to look. I have to look for employment I mean, I after think, Skybound someday, right? I got to think the, the youthfulness here is is uh, uh, of some value. Also Although remember, I think I, I think I'm about like a week away from having a beard that looks exactly like yours, to be honest. The, I the mean, gray hairs are coming at rapid fire at this my, point. When I started with this company 10 years ago, my hair was uh, was much darker like yours is now. So we can tell who, who had a little more strenuous time. <laughs> <laughs>
the past decade. Oh, yeah. Let me know when that uh, booth is packed up, Sean. Have a good time. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> thanks again for everyone to come out for the New York Comic Con uh, panel. Uh, Robert, I really appreciate uh, today. Uh, and thanks again to everyone for doing this. This is great. Love New York Comic Con. Love Reed. Happy to be here. This is fantastic. Buy some comics, everybody. Comics are the best. Woo! Thank you, guys.